so in a previous video I showed some of the Sparks stuff um, I received from eBay. Um, so I thought I'd take a look at it now. Um, and we'll fire it up. So let me get my terminal ready here. And I'll uh, reach over and power it on. And this is a Spark Station 10. We'll see. Okay, it's powering on. And I'll talk to you about a couple of the issues that uh, that are going on with it. So you see some of the boot up messages here, and you might ask why there's so many there, why there are so many tests going on. Um, and as we'll get to later, the old Spark stations used a real time clock slash non volatile RAM chip. It's a little battery backup, battery backed up RAM. And because this machine is what 93, 94 vintage. Um, the battery has gone flat, uh, thereby eliminating the battery backup RAM. And so what it calls the NVRAM and the ID prom are now invalid. So it goes through and it's going to test everything here. But this will be interesting stuff to watch as it goes by. A um, couple other notes, the eBay auction said 224 megs of RAM, I think it's actually 272. Uh, and some of the RAM came damaged, so a little work with the soldering iron um, got that sorted out. Um, I see here we have the uh, the S bus probe. So that first line of the S bus probing is all the onboard stuff. So the Lance Ethernet, the sound device, um, you know, some some codecs. Um, and that flew by really fast, but the graphics board on here is a CG6, uh, which is not, not bad, but it's, by modern standards, is pretty feeble. I think it's 8 bits per pixel. Uh, and the CPU that was in there originally is a 50 megahertz um, SM51. So 50 megahertz Super Spark with uh, a 1 megabyte onboard cache. Again, in my other video of stuff I got, I've got some stuff to expand on here, um, including two Ross HyperSpark CPU MBUS modules. And MBUS is what the uh, what the processor bus is. So that'll instead of being 150 megahertz, it'll be a couple of around 100 megahertz uh, CPUs. And I also have a Happy Meal Ethernet. That's what they called HME device. Happy Meal Ethernet um, slash SCSI board. Um, what I'm really interested in in doing with that is to get the uh, 100 megabit Ethernet working because I don't have any network switches that this 10 megabit, so it's 10 base T, can auto negotiate with. So I can't get an Ethernet link to the onboard um, uh, Ethernet interface here. So hopefully with the SBUS um, add-in that gives me the, uh, so that's a SunSwift card, um, and that is a, a, you know, a fast, wide, SCSI plus uh, 100 megabit Ethernet. That'll let me get on the network and boot it up. The other thing I got, and this video is just going to be kind of a, a basic intro, show the, uh, the boot up here and a little bit in... Um, of what's going on in the open boot environment. So this is the open boot here, and we're we're just watching a lot of the testing right now. If you hear any snoring in the background, that's my dog. He's old, and uh, he snores loudly and a lot. Um, so the other thing I got that's pretty nifty is I got a SCSI to SD, which lets you define SCSI disks as on an SD card. So a little converter. It's got a microcontroller. Um, I think it's a Cypress SO system on a chip. Whatever they, they call those things. Um, and it will do the uh, the conversion from SCSI to an SD card. And it looks like you can define multiple devices. So you should be able to define a CD image and then also a drive image. Now this did come with a um, this machine did come with a one gig drive in it, so let's uh, let's poke around here in the Open Boot monitor. So as you can see up here, we have the 
ROM or the Open Boot 2.14. So that's another upgrade. So there's three things I have to do to get this machine up and running. One is get a new non-volatile RAM chip. Uh, those can be had at Mauser, DigiKey, other places. Put that in and then reprogram it, which is actually pretty easy. You basically give it the Ethernet address, um, the MAC address, the hardware address. Um, so if you see here, I've got a, a wacky thing. And also the host ID, uh, or the machine type part of the host ID. So it says what machine it is and um, what the Ethernet address is. Now, there's ways to spoof the Ethernet address, and a lot of the old software licensing depended on the Ethernet address, so people, people spoofed it a bit. The next thing is to upgrade the OpenBoot PROM to 2.25R. I have that ROM. That's just a little dip 28 pin um, that'll go in. Both of those things are, are there. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm holding off a little bit is I'm trying to figure out a way to, to record this. I think it would be interesting to see on video. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Um, if you've seen some of my videos, you know I just have a phone to record video. Not very exciting. Um, I didn't anticipate this. I thought, oh, screencasting. I'll be more educational, share some of my wisdom. Uh, but I may be able to fashion fashion something up so that I can I can put these kind of internal internal things on um, on video it might be interesting to watch the replacement of the NVRAM chip the open boot prom drop in the S bus expansion card so the Sun Swift and then one or both of the Ross HyperSpark modules so that's where we're at so let's take a look at open boot now open boot is my favorite absolutely my favorite boot monitor prom monitor boot environment bios whatever you want to call it open boot is the bees knees the ducks guts this has been around for a long long time this iteration was kind of i guess the mid 90s iteration and it didn't change too much towards the later spark machines um, before that they had a, a simpler monitor but compare this to a pc bios or even now efi so you can say, help, give me help, right? Pretty nifty. So let's do help diag. Pretty cool, huh? So let's see what's on the SCSI bus. And just do a probe SCSI. And it will go off and probe the SCSI. There is our disk. If we had another adapter in there, we can see that. Now you see, here's the device path. Very nice. Now on the Spark machines, you occasionally would have to use the full device path, but it's a great way to identify things. Let's bring back the help screen here. Uh, so other things you have, you have a debugger. You can sync, right? So if your OS and your 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 prom know about what data, what's where in memory, you can actually break out of the OS. Now maybe I'll show that here. Um, this does have Solaris 2.6 on the disk. You can break back out to the prom monitor, sync, so you don't lose data. So you can you can sync that those buffers um, back to the the physical disk. I mean that is a fantastic feature. Uh, and one of the the interesting things is, if I'm I'm connected here through the serial port, is that if you're connected via keyboard and mouse, you can get into the prom monitor either with a key combination or unplugging and plugging back in the keyboard. Um, this has a fourth and a fourth interpreter so you can actually program this in fourth right here. Um, uh, and it's got environment uh, variables which is how it stores its parameters. So let's take a look at the environment variables. And it's paginated so you can see here we're in 96 8 n one and we get auto boot is true. Obviously, it's trying to auto boot off the network. Um, can't do that. The SBUS probe list, which is pre a pretty cool feature. So, if some of your hardware is misbehaving, you can say, "Hey, don't even probe it," right? Or probe it after something else to to initialize. And uh, so we've got uh, the boot file. You could put security in there. You could put a, a different banner or logo. If we were connected on a graphical terminal right now, um, 
and this is maybe something I should get as a little video capture device so I could capture some of the output of these um, workstation type machines. I mean, for my purposes, going in on the serial link and then eventually network will be just fine for me. But uh, but it, it's it's a handy feature, so it would uh, it would display a, a logo, right? And a little graphical logo that said Sun on these Sun graphics cards. I imagine on the ones that were of a different manufacturer, it would show a different manufacturer's um, logo. I never used any of the other um, Spark stations from other manufacturers, but there were there was Axel and a, a couple of and Tatung maybe. And uh, that's that. But speaking of banners, you can hit banner, and that gives you the the bits and pieces about your machine. Should be able to do an ID prom. Gives you this. Obviously, the checksum's invalid. Um, what are some other commands that I remember that are interesting? Oh, module info will tell you about what's what your CPU modules are. So that's a kind of quick, hopefully not too long-winded look at my new Spark Station 10 um, from the boot prom side of things. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment below if there's anything specific you'd like to see. Um, and hopefully I'll figure out a way to uh, display some of the actual work under the hood here. Again, without a proper camera, it may be difficult. I may be, may be taping my cell phone to a stick. And, I don't know, have the dog hold it or something. But uh, one other little tip to leave you with is I'm using Screen as kind of a serial terminal. Um, screen is great. I would recommend it. So many great uses to store sessions, set history buffers, um, run SimH under Screen if you want to keep it going without like no hopping it and, and be able to get back in and interact with the console. It also works great for serial. So what you can do is oh I completely forgot. Let's uh let's boot up the OS here. I'll show a couple things, so I'm sorry. That was that was a premature sign off. I don't know if you can hear the disc spin up in the background over the snoring dog. But uh the disc is spinning up. So as you can see the ID prom is is completely buggered up. But this is Solaris 5.6, uh, Solaris 2.6, sorry, SunOS 5.6. And of course the time of day is incorrect because that NVRAM is also a real-time clock. But if you see this, so if you're in screen and you need to send a serial break, it's control A, B. And serial break is just like what I described earlier with the keyboard plug and unplug. It sends a break, drops you back here. All right, so I'm back at the boot prompt. I can do a sync, and look at that. We are syncing file systems. This isn't perfect, but uh, but maybe a way to, if things are completely bad, to keep you from having a completely destroyed file system, and then it resets you. So I think now is this is my proper sign off. So little tip: Control A B gets you. A serial break in uh, in screen, and uh, as you see here, it's booting up much faster. Thanks. Bye.